MailChimp's pop-up form builder just got a significant transformation. Say goodbye to those boring designs and restrictive templates. Now it's all about drag and drop ease, mobile first optimization, and endless customization options. In this video, I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process to create a slick pop-up form that truly converts. Let's go. So I've logged into my MailChimp account. So let's pop over to pop-up forms beta. You'll see the data that you're getting here with site visitors and unique impressions. One of the things that you have right off the bat is general pop-up form settings. So at the very top here, we have settings and under settings, we have the sites that you're connected to. So the more important thing here is visitor rules. So under visitor rules, there are several categories and you can create new categories, but the ones that are already predefined for you is already known visitors, anonymous visitors, all visitors and has placed an order. Now you can click on these three dots here and you can edit these. You can specify certain URLs. You can tweak this any way you want. You can duplicate it and you can create your own new visitor rules. So have a play around with this. I'm just gonna keep everything as default. So let's go back to pop-up forms. So to get started with your pop-up form, click on the green create pop-up form and it's gonna prompt you with what type of pop-up form are you going to create? And basically what this is going to do is narrow down the template choices for you. Or you could just click on view all templates and skip this process entirely. But let's click on contest or giveaway and then click continue. Now we'll have two options here that we can get started with. So if we click apply on our option there, and then we're gonna give it a name and I'm just gonna call this two since we already have one established. Make sure you select the appropriate audience if you have more than one. And I wish we could add more than one form field initially, but we can do that at a later point. So let's click on create form. Now, if you're familiar with the old way of how MailChimp did pop-up forms, this is gonna be completely foreign to you. But let me break it down for you uh, piece by piece here. So what you're looking at is the overall interface of your pop-up form design options. On the right-hand side, it's topography and colors, and that is for your throughout your entire design. So if you want to bulk change font styles and colors, you do that here, okay? On the left-hand side, we now have the ability to add or remove steps in the process for someone signing up in our pop-up form. So there are predefined options that are already available to us. We have an offer, follow-up, an email capture, a confirmation, but we can add additional steps or we can delete steps if we wanted to. Say you wanted them to go and fill out another piece of information or take a quiz or something else, you could add that as additional steps. In the middle is how you design your pop-up form. And at the top here, we there are predefined options to zoom in and zoom out, zoom to fit 100% and 50%. Those are your defaults to zoom in to these particular designs. So what are we looking at in the middle here? So this first top piece here is your offer. The next one down is your email capture. And the next one down is your confirmation. This piece over here, is what MailChimp is calling up follow-up. And there's a redirect here. If you notice that there are some elements here where you can redirect a person to that particular page. So let me get in here and explain this a little bit more in detail. So if you hover over your initial design here, your offer design, you'll see here it turns blue. And if you click on that bar, you can it'll zoom right in for you. The other big thing here is that you're designing mobile first. So if you want to edit a design, you edit it in the mobile version first and it will change over into the desktop version. So for instance here, if I am on this image here and I wanna change that, I can click on replace image and you'll see that it's changed. Any element that you click on in your design, you'll see it highlighted in the left-hand side element list. Now this might be a little bit complicated for some. So if we click on 250, for instance, you'll see that it's an H1 tag. And over on the right hand side are options to change specifically that element that we've selected. So in this case, the H1 tag, you'll see here that the color is that color there. And we can add a text border and a text shadow and a opacity and we can rotate it and we can have a visibility and animation. A lot of options that we can do with each element in our pop-up form. 
So let's change this to a March giveaway instead of a February one. We'll just type in March. And instead of 250, we will do 25. So let's click on this button and you'll notice there something called button action. And so under button action, it says go to next main step, step two. But we could change that. We could have it go to the follow up or step three or skip over, you know, and go to any step what we want to. And we can add additional actions. So let's say we want to capture data. There's nothing to capture, but we could do that. We could open up another pop up when they click on enter to win. We could do a custom code. They could go to a URL. We could have a Facebook lead event. So there are multiple options now that we can do with just one button click. So for now, we're just going to click on go to step two and go to step two is the email capture step. OK, hopefully this is making sense so far. Enter to win button action. Step two, step two, if we scroll down, is our email capture. And again, we'll have to change February to March. So we'll just double click in here and change that to March. And we'll have to change the 250 to 25. So what we're capturing right now is an email address. And if I, I've just clicked on that, and over on the right-hand side, you see, it says it's an input field. So it knows it's an input field. It's asking what type of input field it is, and it's grabbing it from the audience fields that we have established for this list and it knows it's an email address. Now, what if you want to add in first name? Well, you have to do that on the left hand side. So over on the left hand side, it says add element. So here you can add in containers and text and images and more buttons. You have a button group. The user input is the one that we want, but you could do drop down, checkbox, whole bunch of stuff you could do, even custom HTML. Let's go back up to user input. It knows that it's attached to a list. And in that list, we have these audience fields. So we want to grab first name. So I'm going to click and drag this over and notice that it is mobile first. I can't drag it into the desktop version, only the mobile first version. And I want to drag it right above where it says email address right there. See that blue line coming in? That's where we want to let go. And now we have our first name. Now it doesn't take the same design that we have for our email address. So we have to manipulate that a little bit to make it match. So if we click on email address, you'll see here that it's got a rounded corner of 50 and the topography is 16. So we'll just make sure that's all the same. So we'll click on our first name and we'll scroll down here. We have 16 on the topography and then we'll click on rounded corners, add the plus there, and then we'll add in 50 and hit enter. Okay, so now that matches. Now, even though we brought in the first name, we haven't attached it to an input. So over on the right hand side here, you see that we've got input given name. We don't have an option input field name. So we have to select first name. So now we've established our first name as our input. Okay. Then we have our continue button. Now our continue button, this time it's got two actions attached to it. And if I click on the button actions, you'll see that it is you can add a tag, so we're capturing data, and it's going to go to the next step. And we can add another action. So I just wanted to show you that capability is amazing. So now we can add tags. So we've capturing the data there, and we're going to go on to the next step, but that's our button. So far, so good. So let's go on to our confirmation step, and then I'll talk about the follow-up. So under the confirmation step, it's basically saying, hey, you're in. You've now entered a chance to win. And I, we could edit this any way we want. We could add in text. You know, we could add in additional elements. So if I click on add element, we can add in another piece of text here to go inside that container, that type of thing. We'll take that out for now. But let me scroll up here and we'll check out this follow up because I find this interesting as well. So let me scroll along here. If this step is closed, in other words, if the pop-up form is closed, what do you want to do? And we can change this behavior here. We can click on here and we can remain on this step or not. We could end the campaign. So in other words, close out the whole thing, or we could go to the follow-up. Now the follow-up is basically when anyone uh, clicks on the X, it'll go into a little corner of the mobile website and the desktop website. And again, you can change the text here and it, they call it a second chance text. And what happens is when anyone clicks that clicks on that button, the pop-up will open up again. But if they click it a second time, then the pop-up will close. But let's go ahead and preview this. We're going to preview this locally. So it's just a small little card that comes up but it will, this is pretend that your website is behind it. And if we click on the X, we see this little option down here, down the bottom pop up for us 
to enter to win. If we click on that, it'll pop back open, but it will go to the capture option, not the initial enter to win option. Make sense? So we can enter on our information here and click continue and it'll say you're in and then we've got our animations. Okay, let's save and review. The next options we have is where should it show? And again, this is showing on the MailChimp free website that you get, but you could edit these settings here and you could manage connected sites. And it'll take you over to add additional websites to get connected to, so you could connect your WordPress website, your Wix website, et cetera, et cetera, so that these pop-ups will show up there. But for now, I'm only showing it on the free website on MailChimp, okay? So we'll just click on save there. Who should see it? So we can edit the targeting here based on our visitor rules. So we have here anonymous visitors, already known visitors, all visitors and has placed their order. So again, that references back to the original settings that we took a look at. So we can individually say this pop-up form will be for anonymous or this one will be for known visitors, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna say anonymous visitors and we'll click save. Now we've already done our content when should it show so let's edit triggers here so you could establish time on page total time on a website inactivity quick scroll or a flick up that's for mobile and exit intent so we'll do time on page because that hits phone tablet and desktop and click save very bottom here we have advanced settings so we can manage when you want to stop showing the pop-up or you could have additional conditions you could end the pop-up after a particular session, end it after, you can have frequency, start once every, start once every page view, don't trigger this form for visitors who have already seen another pop-up for 30 seconds, lots of options that you can do here. And I'm just gonna click on save. So let's click on publish and schedule. So we're gonna publish now, I'm gonna go to that free website on MailChimp. Well done. You successfully built and published a highly customized MailChimp pop-up form that's effective for your business. This new pop-up form builder can help you collect leads, grow your email list, or expand your audience. If you found this video helpful, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more practical email marketing tips. Also, feel free to share in the comments what you'd like to see next. I can't wait to hear from you.